Thank you for joining me today in this lecture. Today we are going to speak about the skull base foramina and skull base anatomy from the perspective point of view of a radiation oncologist. I'm not a radiologist, so I'm trying to simplify things as much as I can, and I will try to do the same for you and hope you will find it you'll find it useful. As we are all aware of the cranial nerve, we have 12 cranial nerves, and the importance of uh, of knowing where the cranial nerve will come out of the skull base and where is the foramina related to the cranial nerve are, is, a, is of extreme importance for those who are working with skull base tumors, for those who are working with head and neck cancer tumors. Whenever you have a patient, for example, um, with uh, like oral cavity tumor, uh, with perineural infiltration and you have to track the nerve up to the foramen oval for example so you have to familiarize yourself with where is the foramen oval how can I find it and then you track it and you draw uh, the nerve up to the skull base foramen so I found it very very important and I tried to make it as simple as possible as we used to do in our own in our lectures to make things as much as we can simple and that, so that you can use it in your daily practice and you remember it without any without any problem. So let's talk about the cranial nerve and the skull base foramina and the anatomy in more details. So the first cranial nerve or before doing that, um, just we can give a simple rule for on how to remind ourselves with our cranial nerve. If the cranial nerve is a famous cranial nerve, you have to find out a specific canal or a specific foramina for, for the cranial nerve. If the cranial nerve is not famous, um, you, you can put it just put a superior orbital fissure or soft and say, yeah, there is, um, will come, will go out of the skull through the superior orbital fissure and that's the easiest way to remember it. So the first cranial nerve is the cribriform, uh, olfactory nerve, sorry, the olfactory nerve. And we all know that the olfactory no nerve will go through the cribriform plate. Your landmark for the olfactory nerve will be the cristagelli bone. So posterior to the frontal air sinus, you have a small bone called the cristagelli bone. And if you go down with your CT scan, just slowly uh, downward through uh, the Cristagelli, downward with the Cristagelli, you have to find out the uh, ethmoid air uh, uh, sinuses there. And the ethmoid air sinuses in the middle of it, there is a very thin bone which is perforated and this is called the cribriform plate. So it's very easy to localize the cribriform plate in, within the ethmoid bone and on either side you'll see the ethmoid air sinuses and this is I think the easiest way to localize the, uh, uh, the olfactory nerve or olfactory nerve or cranial nerve number number one. Um, just uh, uh, from, as I said, we are talking from uh, the radiation oncology point of view. So you can see it's, uh, it's very tiny openings there. So this will be the cribriform plate. Uh, as we said before, we are talking about it from the... Um, from the uh, from the radiation oncologist point of view, so it's very important for me just to show you something about the cribriform plate. The cribriform plate will be at a lower level compared to the orbit. So if whenever you put your field of radiation to cover the cribriform plate properly, you may end up by taking a part of the eye globe. And this is will be accepted or be acceptable for any radiation oncologist working in the field of uh, a radiation oncologist, you, you should be or you are fully aware that a part of the globe can be taken within the field of radiation just to cover the cribriform plate properly and the cribriform plate is a very common place or chem very common site for uh, uh, tumor tumor uh, recurrence yeah the second cranial nerve is the optic uh, optic nerve and the optic nerve is very simple and very easy the optic nerve will go through the optic 
canal and we all know that for those who are not very familiar with CT before just to look at the eye globe whenever the eye globe will have the largest diameter and just go downward so change the, or go with your cursor uh, with your uh, uh, arrow of the keyboard downward moving downwards through the CT slices you will see that the optic nerve will start to appear from the posterior medial part of the eye globe and the optic nerve will point you towards the optic canal and and this is very important that the optic canal may be narrower than the diameter of the optic nerve so you may think that the optic nerve is is wide and it will go through a narrow canal which is true by the way so the optic nerve will be squeezed through the optic canal and what is important of this from the radiation oncologist's point of view it's, it is very important to know that if you have like a cavernous sinus meningioma and it's creeping over the optic canal the space for the nerve is very narrow and um, in in many occasion you will see that the patient will start to have a diminution of vision so you may ask your your surgeon colleague to take part of the tumor out just to relieve the pressure from the optic to relieve the pressure from the uh, from the optic nerve and to allow for uh, uh, in some improvement of the vision if any at all very common mistake as well I can see from my colleague that they draw the optic canal within this uh, bone here this is the anterior clinoid so this has nothing to do with the optic canal the optic canal is the most medial part so it's not this because sometimes when you see look at the optic nerve you feel oh that, that's fine this diameter will go through this diameter no the optic canal looks narrow yeah then the nerve will be squeezed within the optic canal so this is a very important point i want to stress on the sec the, then the third the oculomotor nerve the fourth is a trochlear and the uh, fifth uh, or the abducent let's say the sixth first and um, the third the fourth and the sixth which is the abducent are not very very famous now yeah so if you put them within the superior orbital fissure or soft this will be absolutely fine and it is really correct and the third is the oculomotor is going to the muscles of the eye so it should go through the orbit the trochlear as well it should go to the orbit and the abducens should go to the orbit simply because they are supplying the eye muscles yes we know that so if they will go you have to do something with the eye then they should go to the orbit and the route to the orbit will be through the superior orbital fissure how do we know the superior orbital fissure or how do can we localize if you localize the optic canal then look lateral to the optic canal you will find uh, the fissure just lying there and the nice thing about the fissure that being a fissure when whenever you you go through your slides you will see that as if it's moving so it's not just um, like an opening will remain the same as if it's moving um, like uh, from side to side so it's not a foramina it's a fissure and then this will also confirm that this is a fissure so the spear orbital fissure the third cranial nerve after going through the cavernous sinus the third the fourth and the abducens after going through the cavernous sinus will go through the superior orbital fissure we skipped the fifth but the fifth is the most important nerve i have to stress on and as we, if you remember we used to, whenever we talk about the trigeminal nerve we used to put three fingers in front of our face and we say the first division of the trigeminal nerve is the, is the ophthalmic division and the second will be the maxillary and the third will be the mandibular the trigeminal nerve alone will go through three different foramina each branch will go through different foramina the ophthalmic is not very famous so we will put it through the superior orbital fissure and again from its name ophthalmic so that is doing something with the eye or the orbit then just put it through the superior orbital fissure so if you have a tumor in the middle cranial fossa creeping on the superior orbital fissure you have to be aware that the third cranial nerve the fourth cranial nerve and the abducent as well as the 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 first division of the of the trigeminal nerve may be affected when within the area of the superior orbital fissure then now coming to the most difficult part of the lecture um, which is localization of the two other foramina 
for the 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 second division of the trigeminal and the third division of the trigeminal. So the second division of the trigeminal is the maxillary. The maxillary nerve. Maybe just to remember, I'm stressing on the R, like the R or the R in French. So the R, the maxillary will go through a foramen called foramen rotundum the foramen rotundum when we talk about the head and neck tumors we will stress on a very important landmark within the head and neck something called the ppf the pterygopalatine fossa and the pterygopalatine fossa or pterygopalatine fissure is very interesting area within the head and neck and we will do it in more and more details. But just for a quick look at the space between the maxilla and the sphenoid, you can see here a fissure, yeah? There is a fissure here, yeah? And this is the pterygopalatine, uh, pterygopalatine fossa. I call the pterygopalatine fossa as the roundabout of the... Um, of the uh, uh, the head and neck.